Hello everyone, welcome back to another Named Reactions episode. This time we'll be looking at what is called the Swern Oxidation, and this is using activated DMSO to oxidize primary and secondary alcohols to aldehydes and ketones respectively. This reaction's namesake is Daniel Swern, who developed it at Temple University and published it in 1978. As usual with these episodes, I will first go through a brief overview of the reaction and its mechanism, then follow up with a couple pros and cons of this reaction, and end the video with an example of the Swern oxidation in recent chemical literature. If you'd like some review on some simpler oxidations of alcohols, or just oxidation reactions in general, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and take a look at some of my videos on those topics. To demonstrate the mechanism of the Swern oxidation, we'll just be drawing some generic alcohol. So I can draw these R and R prime groups, and these could be either alkyl groups or hydrogens in the case of a primary alcohol. And we will treat this alcohol in two steps. First, with a solution of oxalyl chloride and DMSO, so dimethyl sulfoxide. And a lot of times the solvent used in this reaction is dichloromethane, or methylene chloride. And this first step of the reaction is carried out usually around minus 78 degrees Celsius, which is accomplished through a dry ice and acetone bath. Then we follow up with an addition of two equivalents of triethylamine. And we can bring this reaction up to room temperature in the process. And as this reaction is an oxidation, we will end up with the oxidized product, where we have now a ketone, or if either R or R prime is a hydrogen in this case, we will have the aldehyde. However, we do get a few byproducts. So first of all, we have dimethyl sulfide, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and two equivalents of triethyl ammonium chloride. So quite a few byproducts, and we will discuss that a little bit later in the video. But first, let's look at the actual mechanism of the Swern oxidation. So as I mentioned, this is a type of activated DMSO oxidation, so the dimethyl sulfoxide is going to be our first reagent that we look at. We will also have the oxalyl chloride in solution. And one of the electron pairs in the sulfur-oxygen double bond will come over to attack this electrophilic carbon atom in the oxalyl chloride, so that one of the electron pairs in this carbon-oxygen double bond will swing up to the oxygen. So that gives us this adduct here, where we now have the oxygen from the DMSO bonded to the carbon from the oxalyl chloride. And this is a type of addition elimination reaction, so we will have these lone pairs on the oxygen come down to reform the carbon oxygen double bond and kick off this chlorine. So that will give us this next intermediate here. And then the chloride ion that we just eliminated from the previous intermediate will come in and attack this sulfur atom, which has a positive formal charge. And at the same time, the sulfur-oxygen bond will swing over to form a double bond to this carbon. The carbon-carbon bond will break, and that electron pair will come onto this carbon atom here. And then finally, we'll again be eliminating this chloride atom. So from this process, we're left with the activated DMSO compound, where we have the sulfur-chlorine bond here. And that's going to be integral in the oxidation of our alcohol. You'll notice that from this step alone, we actually produce one molecule of carbon dioxide and one of carbon monoxide. So now that we have our activated DMSO complex, we can start to add our alcohol. And since the oxygen on the alcohol is weakly nucleophilic, it will come to attack the sulfur atom of this complex. And this will give us yet another adduct, where we formed again this sulfur-oxygen bond. Now the oxygen has a positive formal charge because it still has this hydrogen bonded to it. So that is where our triethylamine base comes in handy. We can add that in, and that will come in to pluck the hydrogen off of this oxygen, giving the oxygen back its lone pairs. So next we end up with this neutral intermediate. And from here, the sulfur chlorine bond can break, giving us one of the chloride ions back, and leading us to this intermediate where we have again a positive formal charge on that sulfur. So now because of the presence of this sulfur atom, 
The hydrogens on the adjacent carbons will be very weakly acidic, so we can use yet another equivalent of triethylamine to pull off this hydrogen and form a carbanion on this carbon atom. So our final step here will allow us to collapse into the carbonyl compound, so the lone pairs on the carbanion can come over to take off this hydrogen on the carbon atom adjacent to the oxygen, which undergoes an elimination reaction, forming a double bond between the carbon and oxygen, and then the sulfur-oxygen bond will break and giving the lone pair back to this sulfur. And this occurs through a five-membered ring transition state. So now we end up with our final ketone or aldehyde product, and also losing one equivalent of dimethyl sulfide. Now that we've learned the mechanism of the sworn oxidation, let's discuss a few of the advantages and disadvantages. One important advantage of this reaction is that it only involves mild conditions. So unlike, for example, the Jones oxidation, which involves the use of sulfuric acid, the sworn oxidation doesn't involve any strong acids and is therefore compatible with a wide variety of functional groups. The lack of aqueous acid in this reaction also allows us to avoid overoxidation of aldehydes to carboxylic acids, which we might encounter in the Jones oxidation. So therefore, we can cleanly make aldehydes from this process as well as ketones without worrying about overoxidation. However, there are a few important disadvantages to the reaction as well. First of all, we produce dimethyl sulfide as a byproduct, and dimethyl sulfide has an extremely strong and unpleasant odor and it's very difficult to get that smell out of the lab or out of the glassware which you're using. One option is to wash your glassware with a mild oxidant, such as oxone or bleach solution, which will oxidize the dimethyl sulfide back to dimethyl sulfoxide or even dimethyl sulfone, both of which are much less volatile and therefore not as smelly as dimethyl sulfide. Furthermore, this reaction has a terrible atom economy. So we end up with only about 10% of the atoms making it into our carbonyl product, and the rest are lost as the various byproducts that we form in the reaction. Luckily, the dimethyl sulfide, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide are all gaseous, so they're quite easy to get rid of, but they still represent a large proportion of the atoms in our reagents being lost and useless. Despite this, the sworn oxidation is a good option for mild oxidations of alcohols and it was actually used by the Stork group in 2001 in their total synthesis of quinine, which is an anti-malaria drug. So at some point during the synthesis, the group ends up with this intermediate, where we have a mixture of stereoisomers of this secondary alcohol. Then they use the exact same conditions that we just discussed with the Swern oxidation, so a solution of oxalochloride and DMSO, and also triethylamine in dichloromethane as a solvent, and taken this reaction from minus 78C to room temperature. And this formed the corresponding ketone in relatively high yield. And you can notice that the group was prevented from using a simpler oxidation, such as the Jones oxidation, because of the presence of the alkene here. And that alkene would be sensitive to aqueous acid, so in this case the sworn oxidation is mild enough so that none of the other functional groups will be affected in this oxidation. So I hope this video helps you understand the sworn oxidation and some of its advantages and disadvantages in organic synthesis. If you like this video, please go ahead and like, and also subscribe to my channel. Take a look at my Facebook page, or visit my website on the screen. And finally, if you're willing and able, please consider donating to my Patreon page, which allows me to continue creating this content for all of you. Thanks for watching.